Hey guys, Casey Ferris here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve. Today we're going to have a whole lot of fun inside of the Fusion page doing some compositing. Here's what we're going to be making. Nice. Basically, we're going to walk through a whole workflow of compositing a muzzle flash and kind of doing some gun effects inside of the Fusion page. Even though this is kind of a sci-fi themed gun, Pretty much all the techniques are gonna be exactly the same as if you did a realistic gun. One note before we get started, there's gonna be a lot to this tutorial. So if you're not familiar with Fusion and you're not familiar with how nodes work, I recommend checking out some of my other videos. It's gonna give you some good groundwork for what we're doing here, although I'll try to explain things as we go. Here we have a shot of something that's definitely not a Nerf Maverick gun. And the first thing that we're gonna do is get rid of this color because I just didn't do a super great paint job on this gun that I definitely didn't paint. Right here, pretty much nothing's happening to my shot. All I have is media in, which is just open the footage and media out, which is render the footage to the timeline. And each time we want to do something, we need to add a node. It's like a little instruction for our little chart here. The first thing I want to do is desaturate some of these colored parts of this gun. So I could use a color corrector and desaturate it, but what I want to do is just desaturate the yellow and the orange, which I can do with a node called hue curves. I'm just going to double click on some empty space in here and hit shift space bar. And that's going to bring up my select tool menu and I'll type H U E and that's going to bring up hue curves. I'll hit enter. And now we have our hue curves here. I'll just hold down shift and drag this in between my two nodes here. That'll connect my hue curves. Now I just want to select the orange and yellow parts, which I can just grab on this little chart here and it's already selected to saturation. So I'll just grab the orangish reddish parts and bring them down something like that. And we'll see that's definitely doing what it's supposed to do. So something along those lines looks good. The only problem is that I've desaturated my hand as well because it happens to be the same freaking hue. Why? Let's bring this all the way down. So what I'm gonna do is mask this so that it doesn't affect my hand. And I'll do that with a polygon mask, just with my hue curve selected, click on polygon. And now I'm just gonna draw a really rough shape around my hand something like this. And now it's just desaturating my hand, which is not at all what I want. So what I'll do is with my mask selected, go over here to invert and click on that. And that's going to do everything except for this mask. And now what I'm going to have to do is animate this as the shot moves along. I can do that in the inspector here by right clicking here for shape animation and hitting set key. And I did that in the middle. So I'm going to move towards the end of the shot last frame and make sure everything's good. I'll just move this over. That'll automatically set a keyframe. And I'll move to the beginning of the shot. Same thing. I'm just really roughly masking out my hand here. And I'm gonna go in between each of those keyframes, these little white ticks on our timeline here, and just make sure that it still looks good throughout the shot. And of course, where it's going to get crazy is right when I pull the trigger and kind of shake this around. But we can do a decent job of masking this throughout the shot. And I'm just gonna page through every frame and make sure that this mask is over my fingers and not too far up into the gun. The good thing is because we're using that desaturation curve, we don't need to be that detailed with it. We just need to make sure that my hand doesn't get desaturated because that will be a dead giveaway. Looks good enough. And now we have our desaturated gun that isn't a dead giveaway that this is blatantly a Nerf gun, which it isn't, it's an alien gun. So now we got to get to the, uh, the fancy parts, which is where the gun actually shoots. So let's move to the right frame, which let's call it right there, frame 945. That's where all of this is going to go down. Now, a big part of this is going to be the muzzle flash, which we could use a texture or a stock element of some kind. But really, you can go away with quite a bit just by straight up drawing one right here inside of Fusion. All of this is only going to happen for one frame. And so it doesn't really need to be that complicated. So what I'm going to do is grab a background node, just grab the left icon here, drag it down, and I'm going to merge this background node over my hue curves just by dragging the output of my background over the output of the hue curves. I'm going to select my background and make it some cool color. Let's make this one purple. Yeah, nice. With my background selected, I'm going to grab a polygon mask, and I'm just going to draw a very cartoony looking muzzle flash. And I guess you could leave it like this if you wanted to kind of have that, you know, cartoony effect, but something like that. And then I'm just going to soften it out. So this obviously looks pretty bad right now, but we're going to make it better. One thing that we can do to make this better 
is add a white core to it. Anytime there's like a bright light of some kind, there's a white core and then there's kind of the, the color that it glows with, right? So let's make a background. Again, we'll just drag our output of the background over the output of the merge. And I'll make this white. And again, add another polygon mask. And we'll just go over this again. But I'm gonna draw a little bit smaller and there's the white core and I'll soften the edge and right now we're starting to see like oh it's actually some kind of glowing light thing I get it I see what we're doing here I see what he, I see what he did there I'm gonna mess with this until I feel like it's good and even though that looks kind of weird it's gonna look really cool once we're done with uh, a little bit of fanciness really what I want to do now uh, to kind of sell this effect is put some distortion on it now there's a bunch of different ways that you can do that but a way that I like to add some distortion is by using a node called this place. I'm gonna hit shift spacebar and type DISP and I want the DSP one right there. I'll hold down shift and drag that down in between. Now this is gonna displace our entire shot but then we're gonna move our nodes around a little bit. We just wanna see what's going on here. So right now, if I were to grab this offset and move it around in this displace node, nothing really happens. That's because we don't have a displacement map. Easy way to make things wiggly or turbulent is just to grab this second node right here fast noise drag that down and hook that into our green input on our displacement map and now let's bring up this fast noise in our left viewer by hitting one i can adjust the detail and the scale of this noise and now when i adjust my displace offset and the refraction strength we'll see it starts to make things wiggly which is good so this is a great way to add like heat distortion and all kinds of cool effects to your image. But I'm just going to I'm just going to pump that up quite a bit and you can play with the you can play with the contrast and the noise and stuff and then that starts to look like a pretty organic thing, right? It doesn't look like I drew that. It looks like, you know, some kind of cool alien thing, which is what we're after. But the problem is that it's doing that effect to the entire image instead of just our muzzle flash. So we can fix that by messing with some nodes. First thing I'll do is just disconnect our desaturated image here and let's grab these nodes and move them up a little bit because these are just going to be their own thing. Right now, nothing is showing up because we don't have a background for this merge. I can just delete this merge and put my background into this merge over here. And now we have just our muzzle flash happening here in merge two. I'll disconnect our displacement and we'll run this through our displacement. I'll hit two on the keyboard to view that. And now we're gonna take all of this and merge it over our original footage, which I can just grab the output of my displace, put it into my hue curves, and now we have another merge, boom, like that. So we've kind of just remapped the way things are hooked up because the way that things are hooked up here in the nodes is really important. So basically we're putting on our pink background, putting our white background over it, and then adding that distortion. So pretty cool. Now let's take a second to get organized because things are already getting a little bit crazy. I'm gonna right click in our node graph and I'll select line up all tools to grid. I'm also gonna right click again, go to arrange tools to grid. This way, when I move things around, they'll just snap to the grid, which just keeps things a little bit nicer. And I'll move this around just so it makes a little bit of sense. And we can also label things really easily by selecting whatever things that we want to kind of group and add a note to. And I'll hit shift spacebar and I'll type UND that's for underlay and that'll put this nifty little label under all of our nodes and if I hold down alt click off of it and then click back on I can select just the underlay and I'm gonna hit F2 to rename it and we'll call this muzzle flash so that's just a nice way to keep organized now if I double click out of here and then click it again I can move this all together as one keep us organized move this back down so that's a lot of the work that we need to do, but here's the problem. This happens throughout the shot. It's just still. And so what we wanna do is make sure that this just shows up for one frame because muzzle flashes are pretty much just only one frame. So at 945, we're gonna animate this on, which we can do really easily through this merge node because anything that you merge over something else, if you want to turn it off and turn it back on again or move it around or rotate it or animate it, a lot of that can be done in the merge node. So I'll grab this merge node and right here, this parameter blend, this is basically the opacity of the foreground. 
And so what I'll do is on frame 945, I'm going to click on that little diamond. That's going to add a keyframe. So at 945, our blend is at one and I'll hit the left arrow on the keyboard just to go to the frame before it. And I'll bring blend all the way down and then we'll go to the right. This is on and then the next frame I want to off. So I'll just bring blend all the way down again. So now we have this popping on for one frame. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. So that's already looking pretty cool, but we can make it better. One of the things that's going to make it better is by animating this part of our gun to kind of move back. That's really what sells this. It doesn't look like just a fake gun that you pasted a muzzle flash over. It actually kind of has some movement to it. The good news is that again, this can just happen for one frame because you know, guns move really fast. So, so what we're pretty much going to do is cut this slide out and move it around so we can just move it back. And then we're going to clone this gun to look like the slide is gone so that we can kind of move the slide independently from the gun. So how do we do such things? I don't know. Just kidding. That wouldn't be much of a tutorial. So, so let's pick one of those things to do first. First thing I'll do is just clone out this slide so that when we move the slide back, it looks like there's stuff under it. This is something that you could do in Photoshop and bring it in, but you can actually do it inside of Resolve pretty easily. And that pretty much happens inside of a paint node. So if I go to this fourth icon over, it's called paint. And I'll just drag this down to my composition. And what I'm going to feed into this is actually the original footage before we merge anything over it. I'll just connect that to the paint node. This is what's really nice about working with nodes is you can just kind of grab your composition from at any point before or after things are applied to it. And it's really, really clear what you're using. So we're going to use our original image. I'll bring that up in this left hand viewer. And at frame 945, we want to basically clone this out at least so the part of it that's going to be revealed when this slide moves looks like it's part of the gun. The good thing is that this is a, you know, pretend gun, so it doesn't really even have to look like anything other than it just has to kind of make sense. So what we'll do is with our paint node selected, I'm going to go over to our inspector and this second icon over is called clone. I'll click on that. That's going to switch us into cloning mode. And then for my brush up here in the left hand corner on our viewer, the fourth one over is called stroke. That's what you want. So stroke over here and clone in the inspector. Now, if you're familiar with cloning in Photoshop, this works very much the same way. If I hold down alt, I can click anywhere on the image and it's going to copy from that area into whatever I paint with my brush. So let's say we'll just paint it in like this and we'll just kind of get rid of stuff like that. So that isn't the most realistic thing to do necessarily, but Again, this isn't really going to matter a whole lot um, and it's just going to be around for like one frame. So we could use part of this gun. Probably no one's ever going to notice it. And the slide is still going to cover like half of this. So as long as it doesn't look like it did. So if I like turn off paint, it should look like there's maybe just something under the slide. That's probably good enough. So that's our hack job clone. You know, you can take as much time doing this as you want and just paint something in so it makes a little bit of sense. Now what I want to do is put our slide over this and mask it so that we can move this slide by itself. So I'm going to use a node called mat control and I'll shift select and type M A T T E and mat control comes up. This is a node that you'll use uh, to do fancy things with transparency and with masks and everything. It's kind of a way to apply a mask after the fact and not to like an original node. So if I were to mask this footage, right here, like with a mask in media in, it would limit it throughout the entire project. And that's not really what I want. I just want to mask part of it for a specific purpose later on down the line. So I'm going to use mat control. There are a couple things I need to switch with mat control. These are really important. Okay. With mat control selected, I'm going to go over and click post multiply image, and I'm going to go to combine up here and click combine alpha. That's all I really need to do. And now it's going to do what I want. So I'm going to take my original footage that's kind of desaturated, plug that into the yellow input of the mat control. That's the background. Then I can mask it. I'm going to bring this up in my first viewer here. Now I can draw a mask around this using a polygon mask. And I'll just do a pretty simple mask around this. It's not going to matter a whole lot if I have it really accurate. But now you'll see I have the mask applied, but it's not really cutting it out. 
The reason for that is because even though it would make just a whole lot of sense to put this mask into the blue mask input, for matte control, I actually need it into the green input. So I'm gonna grab the output, just drag it into the green input, and now it's limiting it to that mask. I'm gonna soften that mask just a little bit, just a little. And now we have the slide that we're gonna merge over our painted image here. So let's bring that up in our second viewer. We're gonna put the slide over this image. We're gonna do that using a merge node. I'm gonna grab the output of our matte control and merge it over our paint and bring up this merge in our right hand viewer. And now I can move this foreground layer with my merge controls like that. So we'll do something like this, push that slide back just in that merge. And even though this looks kind of ghetto, it's gonna be one frame and it's probably going to look just fine. But here's the problem. If this slide is moving really fast, it's gonna be a lot more blurry than this. So I'm gonna grab my matte control, which again is this right here. This is our isolated slide. And after that, I'm gonna add a directional blur. Shift spacebar, D-I-R, and that comes up directional blur. And now I can grab the length and just switch that out and adjust the angle to match. I'll make it a lot longer than I normally would so that I can adjust the angle and have that make any sense at all. I'll try and match the lines that are already on that slide. And then I'll just make the length a little bit shorter, something like that. So that's good, it looks like something's moving on the gun. And now all of this, we can put an underlay on, shift spacebar, UND, click off of it, hold down alt and click on that underlay, and F2 to rename, and we'll call this slide. So that's our slide, and we're gonna merge that over our existing stuff, just like that. Now if we go to media out, and load that up in our second viewer, the problem is that this is overwriting our muzzle flash. All we really have to do is just mask this so that only this part of the image appears, which with my merge selected, I can just do with a quick polygon mask, just like that. Soften it just for kicks. And again, we're gonna do the same thing is just turn this on for one frame here in our merge with our blend, make a keyframe there for the blend, move forward one frame, turn it down, I'll move back two frames and turn it down. So now for that one frame, it looks like that slide comes back and it explodes out the front of the gun. Now we're getting there, now we're getting there, yes. So now, drag our media out this way. We gotta put a finishing touch on this thing. We're gonna add a smoke puff. And again, you can use a stock element, you can make one, you can shoot one yourself. What I'm gonna do is just grab a smoke puff element that I happen to have. I'll rename this smoke puff. And if I bring this up in the left-hand viewer, we'll see, oh no, nothing's happening. That's because this is using the time code from our footage and it's getting all kinds of confused. So the easiest way to fix that is just to select our smoke puff node. And over here in our inspector, we have a few things that we can change. One is global in and out. I'm just gonna set this to the in and out of our composition, 935 through 961, 935 and 961. When we have that set, things still aren't working. That's because we have to set our trim one and 51. And now if we open smoke puff in our first viewer, we can see that smoke happening. We might want to change these in a minute, but we at least have this in a state where we can see things. So I'll grab smoke puff and I'm gonna merge it over our last merge node. And here we have it showing up this way. And there's a couple problems. First of all, this is the wrong size and it needs to be flipped. So I can select our merge and here in the inspector, I can just flip it. And I can also size it. I can move this around. Under apply mode, I'll switch to screen so that it gets rid of the black. The other problem is that it's happening way too fast. It all needs to kind of start right around 945. If I select smoke puff again, I can go back to my global in and out and I'll say 944, let's say. Again, make sure my trim is at one. And now we should have it all starting right about there. Okay. So now we need to adjust this so that it looks realistic, even though it might not be actually accurate that smoke acts this way. If it looks weird, we're doing it wrong. So I want that to look like it comes out of the gun and nobody to be like, why is the smoke acting that way? It should look like it comes out of the end of the gun even if it doesn't make any sense, right? Boom, something like that. Let's see if we like it. 
All right, so that's pretty good. I think it's a little strong though, so I'm gonna select my merge and bring my blend down quite a bit, just so it's subtle enough, but it's not too crazy. Boom. Nice. And you can tweak this however you like it. But that's the basic workflow of making some gun effects inside of Fusion. Pfft. Nice. Just satisfying, man. One last thing I'll do is, this flash looks cool, but it maybe is just a little bit too crazy. So I'm gonna go to my first merge node where I merge the flash over the gun. And for our transparency mode, for apply mode, I'm just gonna click on screen. That's gonna make this just interact with the environment a little nicer. And when we get into color, and do a grade, it's gonna come out really nice when we saturate it up, add some contrast, that kind of thing. So there you go, there's an alien gun effect. Oh my goodness, it was a good time, wasn't it? Hey, if you wanna learn a little bit more about Fusion, check out this video right here. I'll teach you some more of the basics. Hmm. Don't forget to subscribe. That would be nice, then we can hang out a little more. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I got a text message. <laughs> that is funny.